Greetings, greetings, greetings. <laughs> he says not being, still not being prepared. Welcome to Level Up Live number 27. It is Tech Tuesday on Tuesday the 19th of May. How are you? Uh, I'm Colin Clapp and yes, today is Tech Tuesday. Um, but if you're new to the show, first things first, where in the world are you? Uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, are you still in lockdown? This show started off as Lockdown Level Up Live. Uh, 27 episodes ago, Monday to Friday, that was Easter Monday. Uh, but now it is just Level Up Live. I say just, there's, there's more to it than that. But I am coming at you from... I'm coming at you from central France. And we were in lockdown, uh, severe lockdown, but as of Monday a week ago, we were allowed out. So when I say we, that is me and my partner and my two small girls. We, we are house sitting in rural France and we, during that lockdown period, I was the only one who had been out the house just to go to the grocery store, which is about 20K away. I'll come back to the self-isolation in just a second. And, but the poor old girls had not been outside the, the, the ground, shall we say, in the whole seven weeks. So they were just itching to, to get out and see something different. And lo and behold, it turned out to be the coldest and wettest day since we've been here. So, But I paint a bleak picture and it is anything but that because um, we, we are... We're in a kind of isolated, uh, there's nothing kind of, we are isolated regardless of COVID-19. The area we're in is very, very rural. It's pitch black at the moment. I'm coming at you from Central European time where it's 10, 10 p.m. So yeah, pitch black, but if, this, if, the, if it was light, I could see, as, uh, I can see rolling hills for as far as the eye can see. We're in the middle of the countryside we are in a hamlet of five houses. We are one of those five houses. Of the four other houses, there are three that we can see occupied. And of the three, we have seen life in two of them and spoken to them, albeit they speak very little English, uh, actually none. And we only speak a small amount of French, but it's all been very friendly. So yeah, there's nothing, nothing around us in terms of infrastructure. The nearest village is 4K away, or approximately 4K away. In there, there is a small bakery, open five and a half days a week. There is a hairdresser's that was only reopened last Monday, and a library that opens two mornings a week for a couple of hours, and that was also closed during the sort of seven weeks. But it has been open now, and it's really good for the girls. Uh, they, yeah, they've enjoyed that the two times that we've been there. And our nearest village is about 20k away and that's where we go and get, uh, there's a couple of villages, small towns that we can go and get our groceries and, and certainly no shortage there. When we've been to the grocery stores, we've really filled our boots. We're certainly not, might be the odd toilet roll missing but uh, in the first few weeks, but we've, we're certainly not, um, no, from a logistics point of view, France doesn't seem too bogged down. It's just more the, the uh, uh, complying with the protocols that required. So, so all in all, um, so, so, so this isolation is, uh, we're in a very nice house uh, looking after it for a Engl retired English couple who are in Australia, and there is two acres of grounds to look after. Obviously it's springtime in the Northern Hemisphere, lots of jobs to do, lots of outdoor things for the girls to look at and play. Um, but we're also surrounded by farmers' fields. We're surrounded by woods. We've seen wildlife like deer and um, yeah, rabbits and bunnies, those sorts of things. It's uh, yeah. So we're we're anything but feeling claustrophobic. Whereas, ironically, and when I say we, or maybe I should, uh, um, I'll come to what's under the hat in a minute. But when I say we, I'll just to let you know. Uh, uh, do, 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 let's just close off where is the hat. Yeah, we. I am Colin Clapp of. Parenting Passports and Profits. We are a world, let's just change camera there. We're a world schooling family. 
We have been location independent for over three years now. We are from New Zealand and we left New Zealand and our permanent home. We don't have a permanent home anymore in February 2017. So yeah, over three years now. We have been nearly all of that time when we, we left with uh, our daughter who's age six when she was three and a half or three and a quarter and went to Southeast Asia where we have been the majority of the time. The exception was that we went back to New Zealand about halfway through the three year period to bring our second daughter into the world, uh, which was the early part of 2019. And before she was 10 weeks old, we uh, continued the, the journey. So she spent very little time in her home country, uh, but she's got her New Zealand passport and, and now she's, um, she's visited, I don't know, half a dozen countries. We don't travel to many countries. We, our modus operandi is not fast travel, it's slow travel, where we can integrate ourselves into local society for as long as we are made welcome and we can contribute. Um, we work online and yeah, that's how it works. So for the majority of the time, we've been in Southeast Asia. Uh, towards the end, uh, we moved out to the Philippines, so we're still in Asia. And that's where we found ourselves at the beginning of the year when COVID-19 started to, uh, to take shape, excuse me. And we were planning to come to Europe uh, later this year, actually around this time, to be honest, um, uh, spring time, that's when we were planning. So we're back in January and an opportunity came up to house it in France, which we applied for, not expecting to get it. And, but we did. We were made very welcome by this, this, this lovely English couple and we're in their house now. And they wanted us early March. And so we, we went for it. It brought forward our plans to, to move to Europe. Uh, but at that point, obviously, we had no idea that the world was about to change and we feel that someone was looking after us because a week before lockdown, we arrived in France, got settled, got some warm clothes, <laughs> and spent four years in Asia, or sorry, three years in Asia, uh, but uh, nearly four years of continuous summers after spending a summer in, in New Zealand. And yeah, so we had no warm clothes. We got those, we got settled in. Uh, got our bearings and as soon as we sort of topped up the, the fridge and the freezer and got our bearings and all those sorts of things, then we were locked down. But yeah, if we'd been locked down in, in Southeast Asia in small, small accommodation without a uh, decent sized kitchen or, or room to, to spread out, I'm not too sure how, how well it would have gone down with the girls. But, you know, now the girls have got, they've, they've got more space than they've ever had. And it's wonderful, you know. We made some makeshift toys in the in the in the garden and a makeshift playground. And like I say, there's plenty of jobs and plenty of things to to explore. So um, Ellie's probably getting a little bit claustrophobic and and would and would like some uh, more adult comforty other than me. But we could be in a lot worse situation. So no complaints. So remember, if you are just joining the show, please uh, remember uh, let us know where in the world you are leave a comment in the chat and are you in lockdown what does lockdown look like for you would love to know we've had we've had people in we've had people from um we've had people dial in from new zealand we've had people dial in from the uk we've had people dial in from the united states from canada from mexico uh, we've chatted with people from europe uh, france and sweden so yeah um all over the place anyway let me quickly tell you a little bit. So yeah, if you want to know more about we, head on over to parentingpassportsandprofits.com and you'll find out about uh, who we are uh, as a world schooling family. We're used to being uh, world schooling, unschooling. We'll talk about that tomorrow on uh, World Schooling Wednesday. Uh, but yeah, a lot more about that over at Parenting Passports and Profits and you can find out a little bit more about the family. Okay, all right, right. So. We, when I say we, we, we work online. We're a location independent family. On Monday, we talk about, uh, we, we call it Mashup Monday, but it's all to do with online marketing, 
behind the uh, not behind the scenes online marketing search engine optimization keyword research websites email automation those sorts of things that's our topic but today is usually when I drop a bit deeper into the tech and I'd like to do that today and I'm going to talk about systems so uh, so while we'll be getting into that very shortly uh, because I think with the, with the tech it's very easy to get bogged down in the tech and if you have to repeat any process and you haven't got a system in place then you can spend a lot of time wasting now arguably I I spend a lot of time building systems but invariably they pay off with how quickly I can do things uh, afterwards on a repeatable basis. So anything you have to do more than once uh, should should have a system, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. So let me just before we go into that, I just want to give uh, any newbies a little bit of a background into Level Up Live because it is a family friendly show and it is a spontaneous show, and it's meant to be a bit of fun. So I want to be able to give you a big round of applause for partaking in the show. So on the screen you should see a little um, a, a, a URL there and that URL means you can just come on to the show. Think of it as like a radio talk show where you can just dial in and, and come on the show. What will happen now is it'll take you into a virtual room and as soon as I get a notification that you are there then we can we can start chatting and the software that I'm coming at you from just takes care of everything. It's really cool. So yeah, if you, unfortunately it's not a clickable link, uh, but if you go to the live chat, let me just double check, I think I have already done that. If you go over to the live chat, uh, have I got the right one? Yeah, if you click on tonight's, uh, yeah, check the live chat there, you should see a, uh, a link and you can click on that. So that would be a way to go. And as I say, that just takes you into a virtual room. You don't need an account or anything like that. It takes you into a virtual room. Sometimes I get a little ping in my ear, sometimes I don't. So uh, if you do want to come on, just maybe just leave a comment in the chat uh, that you're coming on and we'll go for it. And feel free to share anything around what you're working on, how you're leveling up, what you do. So let me just let me just put some context around the whole Level Up Live and why we are doing it. So it came about as a serendipitous thing, I like that word, it came about as a serendipitous thing on the back of a number of unrelated events that turned out to be related. So I'll try and, I've, I've talked about this quite a lot in the first dozen episodes and I've loosely talked about it in the sort of next dozen episodes. And we'd say we're up to episode 27, been going live every day, Monday to Friday since Easter Monday. So this is show number 27. So let me, yeah, let me put some context and and see if it's a fit for you. So the idea is I was challenged by listening to a podcast from a friend of mine who talked about using this period wisely, this COVID-19 wisely, because for many of us, and he wasn't referring to you know those emergency workers who are on the front line, you know, those people have their lives have been changed in a completely different way. But for many of us, a we have been given a reallocation of our 24 hours. So we haven't been given more time. We've always had the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day, 168 hours a week. And the only thing that separates us is how we choose to spend that time. And the challenge my friend Martin put out in his podcast was that with this reallocation of time where we've been told that we can't do this and we can't do that, and we can't go there and we can't go here, we have a reallocation of time. And his challenge was to use that time wisely. Make sure you invest in yourself in some shape or form. Now my interpretation of that was in any way. So it wasn't necessarily in professional development or personal development, but of course you could do that. You know, there are, there are universities and online teaching establishments now all over the world that are offering incentives or encouraging you to, to um, uh, encouraging you to yeah, take their courses. So lots of personal and professional development opportunities. But I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make that a bit more lighthearted and creative. And, it, you know, if you wanted to learn a musical instrument or a language or just even practice painting or anything creating, actually Ellie has even picked up uh, some knitting uh, 
uh, I didn't know she was a sewer or a knitter, and I'm not even sure she did, but she, uh, there were some knitting needles lying around and she just found a book. Uh, this house has turned out to be a great personal development place. It's, it's sort of a, a house of, a, of our own kind, really. Lots of uh, personal development. Even even our six-year-old daughter is reading personal development books now. She's got one on my maps, and um, she's reading The Chimp Paradox, which is an amazing book. I mean, it's way over her head, but she's 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 uh, giving it a go. Um, but Ellie, Ellie, was, uh, Ellie tried some knitting, so it doesn't have to be anything... Uh, major but it's just taking the time to to learn something to to uh, I guess I missed out something is like the purpose of this show even though I haven't told you how we got to the show is to make the world a better place today than it was yesterday now whether that's your world or your family's world or someone else's world or the world can yeah does the world look better today than it did yesterday as a result of you leveling up investing in yourself in some shape or form it could be just in communication you know how you communicate with another person so 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 that was the first thing the second thing was i was introduced to as i've already told you i am a i am the the father in a world schooling family and i through another world schooling uh, group, I was introduced to, for a mutual friend, a uh, gentleman by the name of Trey Hitt, who is world schooling in Mexico. And Trey was trying to breathe life into a accountability, a small business mastermind with some world schoolers, uh, location independent entrepreneurs. And I, I thought, brilliant, I'd love to get involved in that. Now, as it happens, the timing has just not worked out. The, the, you know, with, that's the thing with world schoolers and, and location independent people. We're always up against time zones. And I haven't been able to get involved. But we were, a mutual friend connected us. So we got down to a one-to-one -one chat and got wonderful catch up uh, learning about Trey and his life. And as we were having that conversation, it came out, or I, I shared that in a past life, I actually hosted a professional accountability group and facilitated that for a number of years. I haven't done it for a number of years. Obviously, we've been on the road a long while and I stopped doing it before we left New Zealand. But I did do it for a number of years and it was interesting. It built a small, intimate group that showed up, like I say, for a number of years. And, and during that period, we was always trying to refresh things and keep things entertaining and just moving the dial so that people could be constantly moving on and progressing in their business and their life, you know. And, and as I say, the group went on. We know, that type of group, I think, functions well when there's just a small group. And our group was always sort of between four to eight people. And over time, with a lot of regulars, it became very intimate. So people get to know each other and trust each other, and that's a good format. So Trey and I weren't too sure how our conversation would lead into furthering um, my involvement in the group or our relationship and we just left it nicely as we'll sleep on it and see how it goes. So I had this conversation with Trey, I had this podcast from Martin just sort of simmering in my subconscious mind, neither occupying sort of front uh, front of mind, but it all came around uh, at the same time as COVID-19 was sort of taking taking hold at a point when Ellie and I were reflecting on, you know, what what we could do during this time to to be of value to others, and one of the first things we did is we offered up our, our calendars, our online calendars for anyone who wanted to jump on a call to talk about anything really. Ellie's background is health and fitness. She is a holistic health practitioner and professional, twenty years plus experience. She has a a very natural way of looking at health and she offered herself up so people if they had any health concerns could could talk to her i specialize in online marketing search engine optimization keyword research those sorts of things and i made myself available but yet yeah, we, we we have different experiences of obviously the world schooling experience uh, the parenting experience we're not gurus uh, on any of these things we we are like everyone we learn as we go we try to get better and we just wanted to make ourselves available if anyone had any questions. And some people took us up on that. But we were, as we were talking about that more and wondering how we how we could do more and serve more in that space, I saw that some of my own mentors and inspirations were creating 
like ask me anything type platforms. And let me just show you what happened there. Yeah, forgive me. I saw that many of my own mentors and inspirations were creating these online platforms and uh, like ask me anything type platforms. And that seemed, well, that, that seemed something that would be more regular and I could do that. And there'd just be this sort of uh, regular meeting place we, we, that would allow people to jump in and, and ask questions. So those four things sort of dovetailed at a point where I realized I wanted to learn something new. I mean, I'm a lifelong learner and have been for a long while. So Martin's challenge wasn't specifically resonating with me until these other things came together. And I realized there was one thing that I wanted to get better at, and that was live video. I've been meaning to do live video better for a long while, and I've, and I've procrastinated for a variety of reasons, uh, all sorts of things, not intentionally, but could never could quite get in the rhythm. But I, I'm, I'm talking to you now, I'm looking down the lens of a Canon EOS M6 camera. I'm not a photographer, I don't know the ins and outs of cameras, but it was an investment in a tool that was better than just having a mobile phone. Now we actually do own them decent smartphones. I've got an LG V30 and the camera on it is fantastic. Ellie's got a, I can't pronounce it, a Huawei, 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 whatever, but there's also a great camera on that. And we invested pretty much in these two smartphones and the camera I'm talking to you at from now, about 18 months ago while we were back in New Zealand. And they're all investments towards getting better at video. But we're not video editors and we can't keep up with the content um, and editing the content and getting it out. So our YouTube channel has been a bit sporadic, which reminds me, <laughs> if you are new and you're watching and you've come this far, do give the channel a bit of love, give me a like, give me some feedback. I don't care if you give me a thumbs up or a thumb down, but just tell me how we could do better. I am, I am coming at you as someone who's making themselves vulnerable to get better at live video. I'm using some software. So this, I'll come back to um, what I was just talking about there. Um, we, we invested in this equipment and I hadn't been putting it to good use. I'd also invested in Ecamm Live, which is a subscription-based software that you install on your Mac. So I'll just come back over here. And so I'm coming at you from a MacBook Pro with Ecamm Live installed. And Ecamm Live is a subscription-based service, but that is the software that is allowing me to do this, that jump from screen to screen. It's allowing me to turn the things on. It's the thing that allows me to go, come on in and I'll you know, give you a round of applause. Yeah, it's like having your own sort of uh, TV or radio studio. It's a thing that allows me to, you know, put up where in the world you are. I should also remind you, we can do and we will do, we will do website reviews. So if you do have a website you want reviewed, just uh, jump on, uh, let me know in the chat and we'll, we'll, through this we'll do a screen share, we'll put the clock on and, and we'll give you a, we'll give you a, we've got a lock screen there so I need to, I need to unlock that screen. Uh, but yeah, we'll put the clock on and we can take a look. So that's me paused because, so yeah, there's some, back, there's some background to that. And that is that, so I wanted to get better at a live video using Ecamm Live. So on Easter Monday, I went, I'm going live. And I've been going live Monday to Friday every day since purely so that I could get better, so I could practice using this, using these tools. So some of the things that you see on the screen, I just didn't, I didn't know how to use them or, or where they fitted in. I didn't know how to do the camera jumping. I couldn't even get the camera to work for the first 10 days and anyone watching would have uh, known uh, how I was trying to, trying to make that work. There's all sorts of things, you know, adding comments to the screen, the, Skype, the meet, the Skype meet. Now I didn't know how to get that working. The 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 sounds, lots of things. We we originally had. Um, I was using a USB mic. All sorts of things. I was playing around with lighting. So just to give you an example, you should see. Yeah, um, it was pretty dark. Uh, I mean, I'm not coming at you with fantastic equipment. I'm just coming at you as someone who's just chosen up. No, I'm going to level up with live video, and. And it evolved into, it's evolved into more of that because I realized after about two and a half weeks that 
I'm starting to get on top of the tech side of things and, and really it's quite unlimited what, what you can do. And I, I can get more fancy with it, but I, you know, like for example, let me show you. So if you, if you wanna come on regularly, bookmark this, this up the top there, and that will always take you to the next uh, scheduled live. So yeah, bookmark that. So it's things like that, you know, that's a transparency that I, 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 I added out of curiosity. Do you like that one better? You know, <laughs> it's just little things like that. You know, how do you, how do you do that? But I can do that through the software. I, I, I worked out how to make the transparencies myself. So I've learned how to do overlays and transparencies, transparencies myself. Now I'm not saying that's good use of time, but it was just part of the evolution. So if I need something quick, I can actually create some things quite quickly. But I could not have done that if I hadn't invested and, and leveled up to, to challenge myself to get better at something I wanted to get better at. Now, I'm not saying you should go on live video or anything like that, but if you've got a guitar gathering dust in the corner or uh, a book gathering dust or some paintbrushes gathering dust or some gardening equipment gathering dust, go and pick those up and just just get on with it and, and make your world a better place today than it was yesterday. So, okay. All right. So that, that is how Level Up Live came about. And I'm just going to be continuing with this while I am leveling up because I realized after about two and a half weeks, it wasn't about the tech and it wasn't about the thing. It was really about the content creation. So Ali and I have got blogs and uh, YouTube channels and we needed to create more content in a systemized way. And we kind of got the bones for all of that, but through a variety of, of making mistakes, learning what not to do since we've been a location independent family, it's taken us all this time to sort of find our feet of where, where, we, can, where we can specialize, what we can do best. And, and that's where we find ourselves like three years into the journey. So, Leveling up with the live video was an opportunity for me to practice the content create content creation process via video. And behind the scenes, I have a, a quite a lot of systems developed, which ties in with what I want to talk about tonight. And now's the time to put those systems into practice. So I'm using the, the live video as an evolution. So that explains the hashtag. So for the first 12 days, it was just me challenging myself to live, uh, level up, um, playing with the technology, feeling like I was making some progress. You know, when I got the camera on and uh, working, when I started to understand how I could throw overlays in and, and, and swap the screens, it was, I was pretty excited. And I realized, like I say, I could, I could keep going and going with that indefinitely. And, but I don't want to be a graphic designer. I don't want to be a video editor and those sorts of things. So I, want to, I, want, I don't want to get, I don't want to get, um, I don't want to throw shiny white objects at it just for the sake of it. But as I evolved through that, I realized that I, about a year ago, I had introduced a concept of themes into some postings we were doing. And that is where the hashtags come about and the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So on Mondays, we have Mashup Monday. That is when we talk anything to do with online marketing, uh, email automation, keyword research, search engine optimization, those sorts of things. On Tuesday, Tech Tuesday, that's when we look to take a deep dive behind the scenes into any technology. I should have said to you, uh, as I'll come back to that in a minute, but on Wednesday, it's World School in Wednesday, that's when we take a look at anything to do with home education, unschooling, world schooling. On Thursday is when we take a, a bit of a deeper dive and a bit more of a thought-provoking, serious look at life. And only if it's meant to be like that. But yeah, if you want to uh, thought, so thoughtful Thursday is what that's all about. And on Friday, that's when we try and introduce other location independent families with Family Friday. So there were five rough themes that we are working with, and that, that fit in with what what we're trying to do as content creators. So, so yeah, I I. We're moving steadily towards that, and the live video has been very, very helpful. So, um, so yeah, that, that's how the show came about. That's where we're going. Can I make the world a better place today? It's, it's meant to be a better place by, by 
if I learn something, if you learn something, then the world has leveled up and we should be able to, you know, the, your world, my world, and the world around us should get better as a result of us leveling up. Even if you just bring a smile to someone's face because you've learned a new tune, a new chord, or you, you show someone a, a painting that you've just done, that if that brings a smile to someone's face, then the world is a better place today than it was yesterday. So, okay, so on that, I am going to try and make the world a better place today than it was yesterday for, for you with a look at systems and why they are important. So I'm going to be, as we do more of the content creation, we're definitely going to dive behind the scenes into the tech. And I was contemplating which you know, was there any tools that we should look at? Now, which reminds me, if you are watching a regular or a newbie and you specifically want me to, sh uh, you want to see a particular tool, if you go to this page here, you'll see a number of tools that we use. And if you use them or plan on using them, we are more than happy to dive behind the scenes and, and help you out with any Q&A on, on those things. Now, I'm actually working that page there is a very, it's, it's been around a wee while and it's not been refreshed and updated. And we updated all three of our websites in the last six months. And that page is due a refresh because we use a lot, uh, a number of key tools that are not on that page. So if you look at that page today, you'll see a number of key tools we do use. But if you come back to that page in a week or two, I'm literally working on it right now. In fact, I've been talking about it the last couple of weeks. I've, I've found it to be quite a technical page. I've decided I won't talk about it tonight, but if you want to see the last two Tech Tuesdays, you'll you'll get a behind the scenes look at how I've been updating that page. And today I actually had a mini breakthrough in getting it off the staging site and ready to go on the live site. So it's still not, I still don't see it's going to be you know, I'm not going to get it live tomorrow or anything like that, but I'm optimistic it's going to be it's going to be live soon. And uh, I say today was a big breakthrough. Anyway, I digress. I digress a little bit, but the point is, if you go to that page, you will see a number of tools we use. If you'd like a behind the scenes look at any of those tools, just reach out in any way. You can find us. You can find me, Colin Clapp, or you can find Parenting Passports and Profits, and there's all sorts of ways to connect with us. And by all means, uh, you're you're welcome to do so. But, but as I was reflecting on you know, a particular tool that we could look at today, I realized I'd like to actually start at the beginning with something that a lot of people forget to do but can make a huge difference. So anyone, if, anyone know, if, there's, if you know me, you'll know I'm quite systems orientated. Sometimes I'm too systems orientated, but invariably, I'm always trying to make life easier for myself and, and for others. So, because freedom only comes when you have systems in place. So if you have to do anything more than once, you need a system to, to be able to repeat that uh, to, a, to a consistent manner. But it can be quite daunting developing a system. And... <laughs> It can be, but it also cannot be, and if you can just simplify it, and that's what I wanted to talk about tonight, is trying to simplify the process of, of making a system, because in today's world with things like, you know, Dropbox and Google Drive and, and things like Trello, uh, Sana, these are project management tools, uh, obviously Google Drive and Dropbox, they are document uh, file sharing, um, formats and all these tools like loom which is a chrome based uh, brow a chrome based screen recording is it chrome it's a, it's a web based screen recording um, tool that allows you to film your screen and so many people are now using that to screen record you know what they're doing or how they do it so that they can outsource it to a a VA or, or anyone really. So the, depending on whether you are into you know writing, audio, visual, there's no there's no real excuse not to be able to use technology to your advantage to 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 record your systems. Like I say, even if even if you 
don't want to write down the step by step. If you screen record and talk through what you're doing, you can create a step by step. And then that way you can hand off a repetitive task to a VA and not get bogged down by the, by the chat. The point is you have to start somewhere. And so what I wanted to show you today was a framework. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is, and I'm going to credit um, an old friend of mine, Charlie Vala, today with, with a, a document that he shared with me. But there's no rocket science to, to, to Charlie's document. And uh, let me see. So we need to draw up, excuse me. Do, 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 do. Uh, let me see if I can just... Okay, what do we want to show you? We want to show you this. So system framework. So uh, what I liked about what Charlie had done, he just simplified it so much. And I've, I've sometimes overcomplicated things. But when Charlie showed me what he had, I was like, oh, yeah, that is just so simple. You know, so it was, and you can see, it's just a pretty plain document. Give your system a title, uh, give it a purpose, uh, make sure that you understand, you know, what the purpose and the outcome is. Make sure you understand why it's important. Make sure you've got a list of the things you'll need before you embark on the system. Then you document the steps to do it. You have an outcome of what it, what done looks like. A checklist to make sure everything is okay. And then if you have a problem. And I saw that and I was like, Charlie, that, that is, that's gold. Just because you, you've, you've just put it into a framework, a, a simple framework that anyone can understand. So what we did then was we took Charlie's framework and as you can see here, we put it into a Google Doc. So on the left-hand side, you should be able to see, let me just go back and make sure you can see this. Yeah, it looks like, let, I'll, let me switch off everything. So you, let's just get my name and all that stuff out of the way. We don't need that right now. Yeah, we'll turn off Tech Tuesday. So what you can see there is a Google a Google Doc, and the Charlie's headings on the left. And now what we've got is a is this is. I think I've I've edited a few things, but it's a document that we use as a template. So every time we need a new system, we open up with this one, and we we take it from there. So how do I use that in practice? Let me see if I can show you. So by way of example, I'm just going to uh, let me see if I can take you to just, so I'm going to just change. Let me see if I can show you Google Chrome. So this is a Google Sheet. Uh, this one's a bit messier. This is our own one, and I won't. Uh, there's a there's a bit of extra paraphernalia in here. But what I really want to draw your line, draw your mind to, is column J, uh, where I've got category, and column K, where I've got tasks, and column L, where I've got priority level. The the other columns are probably not. They, they, they would just make it a little bit more complicated. But what we what we have in column J, K, and L is a sort of categorization categorization of the sorts of tasks that you'll be up against in the different. Let's see if I can show you. If I click on this filter, and you'll see like there's these are the different categories that are in this column. I'm not going to bog you down, but you know, content marketing, customer service, design, marketing marketing video, personal assistance, sales, podcast, research, content writing, sales, SEO, tech support, transcribing. So yeah, a number of sort of sort of subcategories that the another sort of subcategories that exist in your day-to-day -day life. Then in column K, I've written down you know, what we see the task as. And you, what you should notice there is all sorts of things that are repeatable. Um, and these are these are not detailed descriptions, they're just a, 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 a more a memory jogger of the task, a title that I would give the task. And then column L is a, 
a priority level and you can see I've number one closely linked to direct monetization number two indirect monetization some you know which in our case is a lot of marketing tasks three is anything that frees up our time and our, and four is admin it so it adds no value to us or our clients but it's the sort of thing we still have to do so I took each task and gave it a number and I, I share this with you because this is how I there's a lot on on this because there are so many repeatable tasks and it, it doesn't matter what's on mine it's what's it's what's on yours but what I've done is I've just sort of documented all the repeatable things that Ellie and I do to be location independent that are repeatable week in week out or month in month in or uh, month in month out or quarter in quarter out and then does it apply across each site so but then over on this far left hand corner you'll see I've given each one an ID as you scroll down you'll see a lot haven't got because it's just we can only work on one system at a time but as each as each task gets some more priority we 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 breathe life into it through Charlie's document and I'll come back to it in a minute so I just give each system a name and you can see that a lot of these have got links and this is going to take you over to so I'm just going to move the uh, just going to change the screen back now to uh, so this this document here is the template okay this document is the template uh, and I need to go to that document. So as an example, here's one here. So our system for a video file sharing. So the whole process of collating video ready to be edited, as you can see there, how to repeatedly get our video footage filed and prepared for sharing with editors. So that's quite a long title, but that's irrelevant. But starting with the title and then sort of working down what's the desired outcome a systematic way to file our videos so our editors can quickly and easily pick up new jobs it's a very succinct but i clearly know why i am putting some effort into this system i make sure that i've got a real understanding by another paragraph why it's important Without a repeatable system for filing content, a lot of inefficiencies and wasted time will creep into our video production process. As we are physically creating new content on a rapid basis, not to mention the backlog of content we already have, it is vital we develop some repeatable processes that are all existing and new team members can quickly and easily pick up. Because there are so many tasks that need outsourcing or should be outsourced because we shouldn't have to do all of these things. What you need before doing this and now you're getting down into the specifics, the resources, the tools. And you can see in this particular one, there's not a lot of resources. We use Dropbox, where I've created a templated folder structure titled Video Editing Project Folder, Project Name Template. And this is a standard folder structure that should be copied to another, uh, drop, uh, to another Dropbox area and populate with the desired required content and instructions. And then Google Drive access to two files where notes are created. So I don't want to get you too bogged down in, in my particular system, but I'm, I can, I've got quite anal about this because it can be very time consuming, this, this thing. And if you forget something, you can knock out everything. So I want to make sure that I never forget. So, because I, what will happen is I will binge, I will outsource on kind of binge basis, which means I'll really get into the rhythm, know what I'm doing, but then I might not do it for a number of weeks and months, and then I will forget the little nuances, and having a document like this to go back to means I can pick up from where I left off in a repeatable fashion. So, then you'll get to steps to do it, and as you can see, this is where the real nitty gritty kicks in and in this case i've even got lots of sub sub sort of subheadings managing the phone camera storage the dropbox filing the project preparation the dropbox file sharing and the even more subcategories lots of 
lots of little highlights that remind me of anything that I might be testing or, or need to finalize, etc., etc. And then finally, delegate into the outsourcer. Lots there, very specific. And to we finally get to a very short what done looks like. Now, I have a, an image video of the finished result of your system, so that's straight out of Charlie's document. But in this case, it's a new Trello card with updated desired outcome and desired actions and attachments delegated to the chosen outsourcer. So what I mean by that is the whole of this system drops into a Trello card, which is a project management tool, which means when I go to outsource, I just have a card that I share with the, with the, with the outsourcer with the contractor. So we always make sure that any contractor we bring on board uses Trello and they understand Trello sharing and Trello notifications so that we don't have to spend a lot of time emailing. We just know the process of creating all of this content ready for the video editing process will end up in a Trello card. Once that Trello card is created, I just add the team member to that card they get a notification, I tag, I add the mem that outsourcer to the card, I tag them in a note to say this card has been uh, set up, and boom, they get a notification in their Trello account, and they can pick up the job, and they know through the, the way the Trello card is set up that they've got you know X amount of days to complete the task. Checklist, things to check over when finished, all the contents of project folder, support the contents, blah, blah, blah. So again, the, this is my checklist to make sure that the system does what I said it does. And because this, this one is definitely more about the steps, but the tools to, to, the tools to complete this particular system are only Dropbox and Google Drive and, and Trello. So I can see, as long as I've got the Dropbox folder structure all set up, it, it works fine. And finally, if you have a problem, who to contact? So mainly it's contact me, but uh, depending on your system. I always leave that in there. I don't get blasé about that because you never know what system is gonna require um, some extra help. So let me just, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. so I hope this is making some sense. Um, and I'm always open to questions. If, yeah, I, I'm talking rapid fire and I appreciate that you haven't got all the context around this and I don't want you to get bogged down in this particular system. What I really want to highlight is that it starts with a framework. So here's the framework in a PDF file, very simple, put into a, a Google Doc template. So in other words, we, what, how we do this is we literally take this file here, systems framework, our one. So we just, we slightly tweaked Charlie's, added a few things in, da, 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 made it specific to us. And then all we do is we go file, make a copy and create a new one. And that's how we start. And that's what leads to this one here. So you see this one is called S4A Video File Sharing. So if I go back to, I just need to, I don't know if you'll see this on screen because I am jumping between open browsers. Okay, so you haven't got it open, but the spreadsheet I showed you earlier, let me see if I can bring you back to that. Uh, So there's the outsourcing schedule. And uh, you, I don't know if you can, I have to keep uh, moving between software, but S4A video file sharing. I don't know if you can see my, yeah, you should be able to see that. And that links to the document that we were, we were just looking at. So, so take a task that you want to prioritize, put it into a spreadsheet so you've got a record of the task, then create a system around that. So that's what I've done. So now I'm just gonna bounce back to the, 
There we go. So that spreadsheet links to that task. So the spreadsheet is keeping a record of all the all the systems that are being built behind the scenes in our system in our in the way we do business. And then of course I've already showed you how the that document comes together and you have everything you want. And of course I all the updating goes on in this document and means that the spread the spreadsheet the spreadsheet doesn't need to be updated because this document's always been up, updated uh, as we learn learn new things. So I wanted to share that with you because behind the scenes, whether you're doing email marketing or building websites or doing um, keyword research, um, uh, technical SEO audits, all these things that might be part of your location independence, content writing, video production, podcast creation, there will be a number of repetitive tasks. And without, without having a repeatable system, it is highly possible that you simply forget the, the little nuances that make that system so effective in your world. So I... So this might not exactly be tech as you might have been expecting it, but the more you have systemized, the more you're going to be able to let go and and scale your time because you can you can the the, the repeatable things that are documented can be outsourced to virtual assistants uh, anywhere in the world, whether that is a cheap one in the Philippines or India. We use a service. We've used the service in India for, I actually don't know when we started, but I'm going to say close to a decade. And in that time, I've never spoken to a single VA. We've done all our correspondence by email, and every time a virtual assistant, a virtual assistant has left, the management of that company have, replaced, have, have done the training of the next virtual assistant. And so I've never had to train a VA past the first time. So I train a VA, it goes into my systems, their systems, and then if their VA leaves, they train the next VA to take over the job. And to me, that's worth gold, worth absolute gold. Even if we don't earn a lot of money on some sort of things that we do, the, the time, the payback in time, improves our quality of life no end. And, and if you're like me, where you value freedom, and, and spending time with your children, then freedom's worth a lot. Um, so, but yeah, freedom can be expensive and, and, and systems are the cost. So I hope I'm making sense. But if you want, yeah, if you want me to elaborate, as always, just reach out, just ping me a question in any, in any shape or form. But I really wanted to share that because as Tech Tuesday content is created, whether that is in live or in podcasts coming up, and you see more of me doing behind the scenes things, you can rest assured that behind the scenes, whatever I'm talking about, I will have, I will have some kind of system. Some will be more detailed than others, but there will be some repetitive document, there will be some documentation of anything repetitive about what I am doing. And invariably, tech is systems, and it is something you'll use again and again. So, on that on that basis, nearly all the tech we have that requires some kind of back end repeatable system. Now, of course, some are not as important to your business, but everything comes down to time. So, I'll leave you with this: if you wonder why. I, you might even see sort of passion in my voice, but I'll try and explain why this is in why this is so important and the value of of saving small amounts of time if you value freedom. And please don't underestimate the power of what I'm about to tell you. I have to credit an old friend, Lisa Mackay, from the HR Toolkit back in New Zealand, 
Uh, she's originally from Scotland, and it was her who first told me about this. And it, it's the power of saving 10 minutes a day. Do you know what 10 minutes a day is worth? 10 minutes a day over a, a year is worth a whole 40-hour working week. I'll say that one more time. If you save 10 minutes a day for an entire year, that is worth a whole 40-hour week. That's like an extra week's holiday you get because you save 10 minutes a day. Now, do the math. What about if you could save half hour a day? What if, uh, if you could eliminate 30 minutes a day from your day-to-day -day, um, time wasting? That's three weeks extra holiday a year in time saving. So what, you know, that's huge, absolutely huge. If you think about where, where might you be wasting a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes. Where might you be wasting that time? On repetitive tasks or looking for things that you shouldn't be doing. If you can eliminate those in a repeatable way for every 10 minutes you save on a daily basis you're going to get a week's extra freedom that's a week's extra freedom to 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 do more sport or to be with your children or to be with your loved ones or to be with your wife or to your husband or to relax more to have massages or play musical instruments or whatever that has to be that has to be rewarding. So that's what systems are all about. Systems equal more freedom. Systems equal more freedom. So whatever tech you've got, make sure you have repeatable systems, otherwise the tech is going to bog you down. Okay, on that note, I am going to wrap up Tech Tuesday for Tuesday the 19th of May. I will see you in the next video. I'll be back tomorrow with World School in Wednesday. Until then, I hope wherever you are in the world, you are having an awesome day. Remember, level up and make the world a better place today than it was yesterday. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.